All right. Hey, what's up, Cam Fam? This is Pretty Boy Dave T. I am here with Scott over there, and um, we're going to be working on his character. He is actually going to be in the second official stream for Everlore. Um, so that's going to be something you guys can look forward to on Twitch. Um, however, you guys are going to be seeing this as member only content. So make sure you, uh, well, I guess if you've seen this, that means you have subscribed to the site. So thanks. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Scott, uh, your character is a halfling. Yes. Correct? All right. And um, what was the halfling's name? Pimpershim Flintsteel. Pimpershim Flintsteel. Excellent. For sure. All right. And um, the culture you have picked, I believe, was Vizithia? Uh, yeah. OK. All right. Um, and we'll start. Um, where you see on your, you do have your character sheet. And so um, where you see size, um, it's, you know, you can put in how, what size you want. Typically halflings get no longer, no taller than like three feet. Uh, so uh, you can pick your size that you would like to be. I uh, will just go three feet, I guess. Okay, all right. And then also, Um, you will start with, actually, you might start with a little bit of EP because you actually were on the stream the other day. Uh, so when I got two, you got two. Okay. All right. So you just put total EP as two and unused would be two at this point. Okay. All right. Um, so what you'll see on the first page, um, right in this section here, these are personas. Okay. Uh, well, the personas are sort of a general picture of what people will see of you. Like cleverns are uh, book smart, so they may, you know, in appearance, there may be like a, if you're thinking sort of stereotype, maybe a thinner person, um, maybe a little bit more fastidious than, than other people, whether physons, uh, whereas physons are sort of bulkier, they're more used to the manual labor type things. Uh, Socians are often um, a little prettier, you know, maybe a little quick with their tongue. Uh, they're often politicians, things like that. And then Solons um, are people that have sort of a higher affinity with magic and um, also with spiritual things. So that's sort of what those uh, four personas are. Personas are made up of 12 individual traits. And so the traits are awareness, intelligence, and toughness, um, agility, speed, strength, creativity, presence, wits, affinity, core, and will. Um, now, the way you look at it is traits are what your character is born with. Okay. And so as you will progress your character throughout the game, you'll find that those are the hardest to change. They cost the more EP or experience points. Okay. Um, below that is the aptitudes. Uh, aptitudes are things that your character finds that uh, he or she is good at as they're growing up. And so things like, you know, um, diplomacy, insight, intimidate, all of those are things that your character can pick up without um, and do without having like any previous investments. Just trying to get a little light in here. Sorry. It's all right. It's all right. I think I might have a bit too much, but it's, it's okay. Um, so uh, you will see on the aptitudes that there are some like alchemy, knowledge, magical attunement, mend, and performance that have an asterisk by them. Okay. And what that means is that you have, a, you have to have at least one point in the investment slot in order to be able to use that, you know, because okay. those require at least a modicum of training in order for you to be able to use that aptitude. Okay. The other uh, sort of primary function um, of the game that your character will rely on a lot is on the back. Down at the bottom, there's proficiencies. And proficiencies are what your character um, basically gets training at, you know? So um, whether it's sort of at a formal school or uh, with some type of mentor or something like that, proficiencies are those added skills and things that you will train into. Uh, so as we begin, um, the first thing I'm going to have you do is go ahead and put one point in each of the traits. And so you will not put anything 
on this front line. This is actually the total okay. we're going to put on the lines behind the actual trade name. All right, done. All right. Uh, then the next thing you would do is you would put in um, any traits that you get from your character, your your race. And your race being a halfling, um, I believe I sent you over a document on that, but I, I have it pulled up here. I can let you know what those are. Okay. Um, so you can go ahead and put another three in speed. And I would recommend that you write soft because you're going to be changing these things. Oh, yeah. Uh, so another three in speed. So that's a four total or just three? Correct. Okay. And then um, you'll put another two in awareness. Okay. Okay. Now your, uh, your race is a little different. Um, halflings are small size. And since they're small size, they receive plus two to their agility. And um, however, sort of to offset that, you would receive a negative one to your strength. So go ahead and erase that one that you have on strength and take that down to zero. Small guy. Yeah. Um, but you do also receive um, four to your stealth. And so at the bottom in stealth, you're going to put it where it says the enhancement, the E and H. You see that down there? Okay, you're just gonna put a four down there. Nice. All right? Yep. All right, so, the, and while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and give you the rest of your aptitudes from the halfling. Um, so you can put one in survival, and this is actually in the investment, the I and V part. Okay. So you have one in survival, two in performance. Okay. And then three in alchemy. All right. Okay. Um, your rate of motion, which is on the, the left side over here of your okay. sheet. I see it. Um, as far as the base, go ahead and put 40. Four zero. Halflings are, were, were built for speed in Everlore. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's going to come in uh, handy. Um, so then there, there are two things you could do at this point. We can go ahead and fill in the rest of the points that you're going to get for your traits, or you can um, go ahead and pick out your quirks now because sometimes those do impact your traits as well. Um, I mean, whatever you think's the easiest. I have a list of ones we kind of discussed earlier. Yeah, because I know you 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 picked out like Sir moves a lot, um, yeah. curiosity, and then. Uh, the horse dread. So let's go ahead and look at those. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Okay. Um, so what you're going to do on the back of your sheet, okay. you're going to put your positive up here and your negatives down here. So uh, Cam Film, just so you guys know um, what quirks are. Quirks are just something that helps make your character a little bit more unique um and they just add some flavor these are things you do not have to add to your character um but if you do uh it can be very beneficial uh the way it works is that you can get three positive quirk points without any negatives but if you go over that um anything over three so if you went up to five or seven you can go up to seven as max you have to offset the whole thing with negatives um so Scott, you did something a little bit uh, different is you, you picked two negative quirks first and then uh, did get one positive quirk. Um, well, I have a couple more positives, but yeah, some of the negative ones I thought could lead to some interesting. Work. I agree. Yeah, definitely. And so, um, so right now you have curiosity, which is, um, it's a negative two quirk, and then horse dread was a negative three quirk. Um, and so what you can do, yeah, you can just put curiosity in the horse dread. And so that means that you still have three positive quirk points. If you'd like, well, you're going to have to use them because they need to be matched. 
Um, so let me pull up the quirks real quick. So the positive ones I have, um, but Brad sent me kind of screenshots of some of the quirks. Okay. I don't have the descriptions down. Okay. I have double jointed. I remember the general idea of Sir Moves a lot. And then I have ambidextrous or the three I was kind of looking at. Okay. All right. Um, so let's go with what we, what we know you want for sure, which is Sir Moves a lot. For sure. Um, so uh, that gives you a plus two to your APR and, MP and MAPR. So what you're going to do on the front of your sheet, right in this section, it has APR and MAPR. Okay. And you're going to put two uh, where it says E and H in the enhancement section. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's your sir moves a lot. What was the other one you said? Uh, double jointed. Double jointed and ambidextrous were the okay. other. And I was kind of eyeballing. Yeah, yep, yeah, okay. Uh, double jointed is a plus two, again. Uh, so uh, that that would be good. That gives you plus two to agility. Okay. All right, so on your trait, you're just gonna go ahead and raise your agility up by two. Okay. And make sure you write that on your character sheet on the back where it says the quirks. Okay. And so let me ask you about the about ambidextrous. Um, how do you, how do you see your character? Are you are you trying to trying to fight with two weapons? Um, um I was just thinking I'd be kind of throwing knives would be my main thing. I'm not really gonna try and get in there and duke it okay. out. Okay. All right. Um, a hundred percent. I have to have ambidextrous. Just kind of an idea. So. And, and that and that is something you could do. Uh, the way it works is that um, combat works based on a round system. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, each round is broken up into two turns. All right. So for the first turn, you get to use half of your APR, your actions per round. Okay. Or if you're, or if you're casting spells, your MAPR, your magic actions per round. And then the second part of that turn, uh, the second turn, you'll get to use the rest of them. Okay. Uh, the way that, um, the way that, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, you were talking about ambidextrous. The way that ambidextrous works is, let's say that um, your sort, if you have nine. APR, nine actions per round. And you have a sword that deal that costs three actions per round to use. All right. That means that you can use it the first turn, but then you're sort of swinging. And then we cut to the other guys and you'll finish that action on the second turn. Okay. All right. If you're ambidextrous, you'll be able to do those two swings, sort of stack them up front. Okay. And then use the rest afterward. So that could come in handy, um, but it may not sort of fit okay. exactly. Yes. Um, some things that I, that I might consider are, uh, you could do something like aggressive. You know, if you want your, your person to uh, sort of be quick on the draw, um when we determine the uh court the um sort of the the order in which combat will go that's determined by an impulse roll okay. and you'll see impulse on the bottom of the sheet right over here okay and so if you get like something like aggressive you add plus two to that so you got a better chance of jumping in before someone else does. Um, you could also consider something like uh, trade assist one, which would um, let you place another point on any of the other 
traits at this time. Um, because at this point you have five negative points and you currently have four positive points. Yeah. Um, ambidextrous, I believe, is three. I three. Think I... Yeah. Um, and so that would take you to the total seven. Um, Another negative one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and th and there are like with with the um, idea of a positive three quirk, um, you might even want to consider something like arcane opposition, which gives you plus five to your magic resistance. Okay. And what that means is like the way spells works in Everlore is that if I'm casting a spell, I have to roll my spell dominance and you roll your magic resistance. If my spell dominance is higher, then my spell works on you. If your magic resistance is higher, my spell fizzles out. You know, so if your character isn't one that focuses on throwing spells, you may want to just beef up a little bit of that protection against spells. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea then. You know, um, so there's that one. Um, hmm. Um, I mean, I'm fine with the arcane opposition. I, I don't have the full list, so. Yeah. If I um, that, I'd need to find another, I guess, negative two quirk. Correct. Mm. Um, let me give you one other idea for the, the positive three, just, just to sort of throw it out there. Um, there's one called decisive two. Um, you are st your staunch belief in your in the righteousness of your actions gives you an advantage in many situations. You receive a plus four to hit and damage, as well as to all impulse and mental fortitude checks. So that's good. Um, I, I would I would think between that or the arcane opposition. So would spells have? Like mental fortitude checks, like if I'm getting some sort of like charm type. Most stuff. spells don't. Most spells are strictly magic resistance. There are a few that do, like the mental fortitude, but by and large, spells deal with spell dominance and magic resistance. I'm leaning towards the uh, magic resistance. Arcane then. opposition. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and write that on the back. All right. Let's and then on the front where you have magic resistance in the E and H for enhancements, you're just going to go ahead and write five. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's all the positive. You have seven total positive points. Um, now let's go ahead and give you some of those negatives. So you got the curiosity. So go yeah. ahead and write curiosity. Done. All right. And on the front of the sheet, uh, right across pretty much where the magic resistance was, you're going to see MF, mental fortitude. Okay. And uh, in the E and H, go ahead and write negative three. Just curious, you know. Yeah, um, that'll be interesting. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, horse dread. That's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and just write horse dread on that. Okay. Um, and I would probably put um, just in there MF13, just so that you sort of remember whenever you, you encounter a horse, um, you have to roll a mental fortitude of, of at least 13. And those do go up as your character goes up, but for now it's gonna start at 13. And if you don't hit that, you better turn on your heels and start running. <laughs> yes. Um, and so we need another one that's a two, right? I believe so. Okay. So I will let you know what some of them are. 
and I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to also think what has the group done, you know, so that there's not too much of the similarities in that. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> one that has not been used. Um, I mean, we can go either way it goes. Okay, so there's one that's called Loose Lips. Okay. And um, Loose Lips sinks ships and can sometimes doom a whole party. You're like an open sieve. Secrets seem to burn a hole in your brain and tumble right out of your mouth. You have little understanding that of the impact of your words and must succeed at a mental fortitude check, uh, difficulty quotient 19. So this is going to be even harder than your horse thing. Uh, yeah. to prevent from letting slip any secret. Uh, so in this situation, you know, you might be in a in a tavern or something and, you know, you guys are whispering. In that. And but you're like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, so <laughs> so that sort of thing. Um, yeah. There is a psychopath. Um, you enjoy killing. And uh, no, I, I mean, you really enjoy killing. Yeah. Uh, you will draw your blade at the slightest provocation. Um, you must succeed a mental fortitude check DQ 13. So again, not as not as high, or you will seek to uh, start a fight over such perceived slights as someone bumping into you, not laughing at your joke, making you the butt of a joke, mentioning you in an unflattering way, or something like that. Okay. Um, there is recovering addict. Um, you used to be hooked on several narcotics and still have a taste for the illicit substances. Uh, when entering a village, city, or settlement, you um, are always tempted to seek out criminal elements to see about picking up your old habit. Um, again, you'll have to do a mental fortitude check to see if you can stop from doing that. Um, you could have vertigo, so you can't abide heights and receive a negative three uh, to all roles when you're in places more than 30 feet off the ground. Okay. Um, Let's see, there's a body odor. You have a particularly offensive smell and receive negative three to all charisma checks as well as to any uh, attempt at stealth, which I, I really wouldn't I really wouldn't go with that because not only with that one, for, for you I'm thinking of, like especially if you want to sort of stay out of the fray, you might rely on stealth a lot. Yeah. You know, and I'd, I'd hate for you to sort of lose that element of that character. Um, I'm looking at, so I just pulled them up on my phone what Brad sent me. Uh, okay. Bad reputation. Okay. Um, Speaking with the background I kind of have of my guy, my character just kind of having to be a thief to survive maybe one city he kind of got caught. Okay, okay. Run away. And, and we just, could even... Um, make that maybe that was the city that you were born in, you know. I mean, because you, you have, I think we said you, you have a big family and you got a lot of brothers and sisters, and your family's similar, you know, pretty wealthy, so you yeah. don't really have to be thieving, you know. Um, but you, you got those sticky fingers, and so yeah. yeah, okay, bad reputation would be good on that. Um, so go ahead and write that down, wouldn't uh, make. Yeah, I was just thinking like loose lips wouldn't make sense with just kind of what I know of halflings. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thinking bad reputation. All right. Um, so with that, um, you'll just uh, write to the side of that negative three. Um, P-E-R slash DIP, so performance slash diplomacy. And okay. that'll just remind you whenever you're dealing with citizens from that city. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and you can even write like um, home city or something like that. Because right now we haven't identified the name of the city. All right. Okay. All right. So now that that is done, you have 13 additional points to spread out in your traits. Um, one you're gonna to have to put is one in strength because you can't start with 
zero in any of them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> if you are going to be sort of combat, uh, like a melee type person, a physical combat, um, you'll see on the right in the middle section here, these are your combat roles. Okay. And so you'll see that speed, I mean, uh, that your melee attacks rely on speed. Your ranged attack rely on awareness. Okay. Um, so I probably put in a good amount for either. Um, understanding that halflings were sort of built for speed, so your your character is geared more towards that. Um, but you have a pretty good awareness starting off. Mm -hmm. And so um, I probably put a tally mark and then go ahead and spread your 13 around. You can have ones and things, so that's, you know, um, just consider sort of the fullness of your character. All right. You got all those taken care of? Uh, working on it here. All right, no problem. So creativity, that would be, like, what would that entail? Uh, creativity is, is sort of like it sounds. It's, it's how well you are at um, coming up with new ideas, things like that. The combat orientation of that would be for your ranged damage. And okay. that's because you, you're creative and how do you place that arrow or that dagger, things like that. Um, so that's how it will impact your damage. Um, it impacts your character by like through things like craft um, and it's also used for um, your protein and your performance and things like that. Okay. And I might even consider making sure you put, you know, one or two at least in like will and wit. Okay. Um, and maybe even core because those all go towards your magic resistance. Okay. You know, if you're not going to be a spell caster, at least be a spell defender, better chance. Yeah. And affinity, what's, what does that cover for me? I see alchemy, learning. And then also your naturism. Okay. Affinity is like how well do you um, sort of access and assimilate outside information. Okay. Got three more points I need to put in here. Okay. When you get those, let me know what those are, um, and I'll fill them out on this so I can I can take a look at them too and, and see how that looks. Okay. One moment, my dog wants to go out. She's hounding me. All right. Um, I'll just put another one into speed here. Okay. So I think I'm good. So I have 
My awareness is a four. My intelligence, I have a two. Uh, let me look at that. Uh, toughness, I just have a one. I don't think a, ha a halfling would be the toughest. Okay. Uh, agility, I have a five. And speed, a five. Strength, I put two. Uh, creativity, three. Presence, I have a one. Wits, a four. And then I have my affinities, a one. And my core and willpower are twos. Okay. Um, let me know if you think that's a good idea or I should maybe rearrange some stuff. It's looking pretty good. Uh, one thing I would probably recommend um, is maybe, well, let me ask you this. Um, your strength is a two, all right? Mm -hmm. So that means that when, when you're hitting, you know, somebody like, if you're actually stabbing them with a dagger. Yeah. Beyond the role of the weapon, because, you know, each weapon has its own damage role, you're right. going to be adding your strength to it. Okay. All right, so in that situation, you would only be adding two to it. Maybe um, more in there then? Yeah, I would think uh, maybe, um, you might want to take maybe one out of the wits and put it into that. That sounds good. Um, and then your, um, your agility and your speed work together to, to, um, go into your APR, your actions per round. Okay. Um, and so... At this point, you'd be sitting at 13 actions per round, which is not a bad, not a bad start. Um, your agility also goes into your vestment. So if you look, can you let her in, please? Uh, so if you look down here, um, where you have vestment, you'll see the the trait that goes into that. Okay. And so that's your agility. Um, What we can do is we can see um, as we fill this out, because you'll have a role based on that too, um, to see what your investment goes out to be. Um, but we might want to consider maybe shifting one from something and putting one more into like agility. Okay. Uh, Works for me. So, so we'll hold that on. The next thought, the next thing we would do is you would go ahead and fill out the other investments that you're going to get uh, for your aptitude. So right at this point, you have nine more aptitude points. Okay. And you can put them anywhere you choose. Um, so let me ask you, like, you said he's going to be a thief. Um, so definitely I would consider st uh, stealth. Uh -huh. um, also, protean. Um, protean is something that you would use, like if you wanted to, like pick a lock or something like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that might be something you want to make sure you're putting something in. Um, if you do, uh, well, I mean, you, you if you want to cast spells, um, well, you're not you're not set out to be a spellcaster, so I probably wouldn't worry about those things too much. Um, maybe survival. Um, perhaps some persuasion if you want to like sort of con your way in, in and out of things. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, progressing your character in game uh, is with with the different traits in order to change a trait. Well, I'll let you finish that before I throw more stuff at you.
All right. So I went with two in persuasion, uh, okay. three in protean, two in stealth since I already have a four. You already had a four and then you put two more, okay. So I had for my enhancement, right? Oh yes, got it. And then uh, I put three into survival. Three more, so you're up to four total? Uh, well, I'm up to three total, so two. Okay. And then that should be it, right? All right. So you can check that by just counting them and make sure you have 15. Oh, I don't have 15 total. Okay, three, six, nine. You got a two in performance. I don't remember writing that though. <laughs> yeah, you 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 got that from your character. Yeah. So yeah. So that'll get you that'll get you your 15. Yep. Okay. All right. And so the way that you progress your character in game is you receive experience points uh for you know, how well you um, role play or if you answer questions or you know, any, any number of things you okay. can get experience points for. And so you collect those and you use those to buy the abilities for your character. Um, so in order to raise your traits, it's seven times the current number. So for your awareness, in order to raise it to five, it'll cost you 28 EP. Okay. Um, so obviously the higher up it goes, the harder it is to change those. Right. Uh, with your aptitudes, the way it works is um, with, if it doesn't have anything in investment spot, slot, it costs you three points to get that first one. Okay. Um, thereafter, it will be two times whatever that current number is. Okay. So for your performance to move that up to a three, it's going to cost you four EP. And so that's how that works. Okay. All right. Um, you also have to add something from your culture. So let's take a look at your culture, which is Vizithia. Um, you will receive plus two to learning. And so under your aptitude for learning, you're going to put plus two in the E and H. Okay. All right. Uh, you also have three different options for proficiencies. Um, there's group fight, although I, I think I think there's like two people in your party who's already no one other person in your party picked that because um, she's also also from Vizithia. Um, so I would encourage you to pick like reserve strike or spell domination. Uh, reserve strike. It's a uh, Vizithian fighting technique emphasizes an economy of moves. They often observe their opponent's combat strategy for one round before launching an attack. If a Vizithian holds her attack for the first round, she gains plus two to attack and damage against the same opponent each additional round. And so the player must notify the LM uh, which foe their character is studying during the initial round. Okay. You know, so so if, you, if you use that stealth and hide out, and watch for one round, then whenever you're attacking that one person, you're at an advantage. Okay. Um, so if that's something you'd like, you could do that. Um, let me also read to you spell, dominance, spell domination just so you know what that is. Uh, Vizithians have the capacity to become potent spell casters and gain plus two to spell dominance. Yes. I'm not really seeing that for you just yet. That reserve break. Okay, all right. So what you're gonna do on the back of your sheet, just write it down here, reserve strike. Okay. And, um, and then I would probably write just plus two um, A slash D, so attack and damage. Okay. Now we're, we're not writing it on the front of this because it's not to all of your attacks and damages. 
it's only against that one person. So this is where you, Scott, will have to remember that your character Pim has this. And yeah. you know, then you'll say to the LM, you know, that that orc over there, that's my target. Okay. All right? Okay. Um also on the back while we're looking at Vizipia, on the back here you have your languages. And so you get two languages just from being Vizithian. The first one is Amharic, and it's A-M-H-A-R-I-C. Okay. And the second language is Oromo. It's O-R-O-M-O. -O. Okay. Um, Amharic is the, the um, sort of national language of Vizithia. And Oromo is the language that uh, merchants above ground often speak. So okay. you'll be able to speak with, you know, some of the merchants in different areas, things like that. Uh, but we don't have sort of like a common tongue in Everlore. Um, each of the societies has their different flavor of tongues. Okay. All right. Now, as a halfling, um, <clears throat> not sure if you got the, a chance to look at that, uh, the document that I, I sent for you about the different halfling cities. Um, because halflings are different in Everlore. Um, most people don't realize that halflings have cities. It's a really closely held secret. Um, halflings typically have barrios in just about every culture. And people think, oh, well, that's just what a halfling is. But they actually have, um, in, in Midian, they have three distinct cities. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, your, your, uh, your character would have been born in one of these three cities okay. and would live there um, until their features become more normal. Because halflings, again, aren't birthed like normal. Um, right. You guys are actually... Uh, created from shards of the blood moon. And so in order to keep that secret hidden, they don't allow their children to be seen. Right. Um, so you can choose from Maracosa, uh, Umberhollen, or Warrenwood. Um, Warrenwood is like a jungle oasis. Um, it's located in the, in the treacherous flesh gorge swamp. Um, Umberhollen is located in the southern region of Midian. Um, it resides at the base of the Eversort Mountains. Um, and then Maracosa is, um, it's actually a, it's a city that is not actually physically on Methandria. Uh, okay. There's a splinter plane that um, is attached to Methandria and it's actually in that splinter plane. Um, hmm. Think about the halflings from Maracosa, which are different than halflings every, everywhere else, is that um, they actually can communicate telepathically because of a condition that um, happens inside of that splinter plane. And would that just be between halflings or would they be able to communicate? It would be between halflings of Maracosa. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is there one are they all kind of accessible to everywhere else on Midian or? No, um, you'd, you'd have to travel to go get to them. Yeah. Right. Like, and, so and, which one would be closer to, what is it, Visithia? Um, they're, they're all sort of uh, different. I would probably go with Umberhollen because it's in, it's in the southern region at least. Um, okay. The uh, Marcosa is more sort of the um, mid to northern section. And then, okay. um, yeah, the, the other one is sort of to the northeast. So, yeah, Umberhollen, it's uh, U M B E R. And you can just write that under, like, just so you remember it, you could just write that, like, off to the side or something like that. Um, Halfling City, Umberhollen, U M B E R H A 
L L E N. And the thing about Umber Holland is um, even when people are, are walking through, like, because it's just basically looks like a forest. Um, there are massive trees, like, you know, sequoia trees, and, and um, most of them look like normal trees. Most of them are normal trees, but some of them are actually towers. Um, okay. And the city is actually underground. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Umber Holland. Uh, you could just, uh, for now, just place them in there. Okay. Um, so now we're going to look at your equipment. Um, well, actually, let's finish up with your proficiencies. Uh, you, at this point, get six points to spend in proficiencies. Um, the way proficiencies are is um, a proficiency cost EP equal to three times whatever the tier is. So mm -hmm. for tier one proficiency, it will cost you three EP. For tier two, it will cost you six EP. Um, at this point, I would recommend probably getting the two tier ones. And so let me pull that up here. All right, um, a couple of things before we get to that. Um, let, let me explain to you the other, other benefits you get from being a halfling. Okay. All right, and so um, these will actually be listed down here in your proficiencies. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, one, you get star sight. And what star sight is, it allows you to see in like starlight or moonlight or low light conditions, um, as well as others can see in regular daylight. Okay. You um, have alert, which means that um, halflings are highly attentive and thus are likely to avoid most mishaps, they receive plus one to impulse, MR, and MF. So you're gonna write, you're gonna write alert, and okay. then on the front of your sheet, for impulse, MR, and MF, you're gonna add one into the E and H. Okay. All right. Um, halflings, uh, halflings have astrofusion, and um, what that means is they have a unique connection with cosmic forces and always know their direction in relationship to various constellations, uh, regardless of if they can see the night sky or not. Um, thus, a halfling is never truly lost. Um, however, mm -hmm. operating under the open sky on a cloudless night, um, halflings receive plus two to awareness plus two to speed, plus two to wits, or plus two to willpower. So you have to pick one of those. Okay. And um, to use this ability, the player must tell the LM at the beginning of the night which trait is being enhanced that night. So I would just write down astral infusion, or you know, A infusion, because I know there's not a ton of space for that. And then maybe plus two. And that way you'll just, you'll have to remember, and once you have the book, the Travelers Compendium, you'll be able to okay. see that. 
So I can change that anytime we're out. Correct. Yeah. At, at night, you just tell the LM, you know, today I, I, I feel like my character has more, you know, awareness. That's pretty cool. Thing like that, yeah. Um, also, you have On the Mark. And um, from childhood, most halflings are taught how to survive in the wilds. Since a halfling's hunter's weapon of choice is often a ranged weapon, maturing halflings develop in incredible accuracy and receive plus two to RAB, so range um, attack bonus and RD, range damage. So if you just write on the mark. Okay. And then on the front of your sheet, where you have RAB and RD, and the okay. ENH, just put plus two. Awesome. Yep. Okay. Next, um, halflings have quick hands. Um, and what quick hands is, halflings are dext have dexterous hands and receive plus two to stealth or performance rolls when trying to take small objects without detection or when trying to get out of ropes. Okay. So this will help with your pickpocketing because pickpocketing in Everlo relies on your stealth ability. Okay. Okay. Um, next, you'll write down swift action. All right. All right. And what that means is halflings were made for speed. They receive plus one to APR and MAPR at character creation and at every 300 EP afterward. So on your front of the sheet where you have APR and MAPR okay. over in the ENH, do plus one, plus one. And so at every 300 EP, you automatically get another one to that. All right. And then um, the last thing you get from being a halfling is water tread. And so what that is, is halflings have the ability to walk on the surface of the water for up to 300 feet. This ability only functions if the halfling keeps moving at a normal rate of speed if she stops or her speed is reduced below normal, then gravity will find its spine and she will sink just like any other creature. A running halfling can move atop the surface of water for a distance of a thousand feet. You know, so. Hmm. I was looking at that. There could be some interesting uses for that. Very true. Very true. Um, so, so now that we have that, um, we're going to go back to sort of finishing up your proficiencies. So you have six additional points to put in, in proficiencies. Okay. Um, let me get the proficiencies up here. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's all right. Um, like I said, I would recommend two tier one proficiencies. Um, and I can, I I'll sort of give you like a, a feel for um, there is armor, fami armor familiarity, which will give you plus one divestment, so making you a little bit harder to hit. Okay. Um, there is um, one that might be, there's a couple that would be good, but one that I'm thinking you might want to consider is um, Let's see, where is that? Thieves can't. Thieves can't. Um, and that's a, a secret language known to sort of the criminal element. You know, so it's, they often speak in codes and things like that. So even as you're listening to people speaking in taverns, if, if they're stuck speaking in that coded language, you might be able to understand and interpret that. Um, so that's a possibility. For sure. Um, you could do something like um, 
Hmm. I would maybe do something like combat training, which uh, you have received basic martial training and gain plus one to hit. And the good thing about that is that that would go into all three of your attack styles. Okay. Um, so the range and the um, melee, as well as the offhand. Um, let's see. Um, trying to think. Uh, I mean, there's things like body strong to give you increased endurance. Um, you do want to use a weapon, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. All right, because there's brawling things like that that are without fight without weapons. Um, no, I'm thinking uh, thieves can't, and then the one that gives me a plus one on attacks. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Um, yeah, so you can just write thieves can't. Um, there's also like you know range finding, which gives you plus one, but that's to RAB only. Um, one that that people do find handy is ready weapon. Okay. Um, so typically if you're in combat and you want to draw your weapon, that's one APR. Um, ready weapon just allows you to draw it, do it as, as a free action. Um, but again, you know, something you may or may not want to do at this point. Um, I think the thieves can't and the combat training would be good to start. And then you can build up as you get EP. Yeah, I think I'll go with Thieves Cant and Combat Training. Okay. So go ahead and write those down. Okay. And then on your character sheet, just for the for the different uh, combats, you're going to have to go ahead and put plus one in each of the enhancements. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So looking at your, um, at the race, you also get um, a couple of languages. So um, halflings speak half tongue. <clears throat> and um, you also receive um, a bonus language um, so actually you get two different, two other languages. Um, and so I'll, I'll sort of let you know how the languages work. Um, languages are both basically broken down into two things. There's languages from like cultures and then there's languages based on the different races. Um, since you are, um, you guys are gonna be going through the Archstone range and so you may be encountering sort of a different variety of different races and things like that. Um, something that several of the races, particularly races that live out in the wild and things like that um, speak is wood tongue. Okay. Um, so that may be one that you would be interested in. Um, we have um, like dwarf tongue, Dwarves are the most sort of honorable of all the races in Everlore. And so um, if you could speak with dwarves, that'd be great. Um, there's things like mud tongue is, you know, language that's common amongst goblins and other Mongol races. Um, okay. You can do something like obscure, like ruination, which is the language of infernal beings. So think demons and devils or like celestial, which is the language of um, angels and seraphims. Um, do something like worm tongue, which is the language of dragons. Um, so you can think about that. And that's not something you have to set in stone now. You can wait till you get the books and go through and really pick out the two that you want. I might do that. Yeah. Um, but just write in there that you get two additional languages. Okay. All right. Um, 
other thing on your on the front of your sheet where you have um, down here you have spell regeneration. All right. All right. Um, you're going to go ahead where it says racial, the RA, racial adjustment. It's two. Um, and what, what that is, is basically if you use up a lot of spells or whatever, um, every six hours you'll regenerate two spell points. Um, so those will come into play later. Okay. All right. Um, so at this point, you have mostly everything. Um, we're going to talk about equipment, and then we'll do the roll for you. All right. All right. Um, so the way that your equipment works, hold on, let me let me copy this real quick. Hmm. Okay. Oh, that's because I'm in the wrong file. All right. Um, at the beginning of your character, you can do equipment in different ways. One, you could get a travelers kit, which has a, a good amount of stuff in it, or you can get um, you can do a roll to determine how many silver pieces you get. The roll would be ten d twelve, so a potential of one hundred and twenty silver pieces, or you can get a kit. And it'll come stock with some stuff, and I'll read that to you. Um, it's up to you. Uh, my character went with the kit um, because I didn't have to worry about trying to piece out and price out everything else. Um, but as part of the generic Travis kit, uh, you receive a plain leather armor and a simple dagger. So that's what you start with, um, as well as one of the following. Um, either Tilden's Tiny Tome, but since you're not spell casting, you wouldn't really worry about that at this moment. Um, a short sword, a hammer, or a bow. Um, so you'll start out with your leather armor, a dagger, and then one of those three weapons. And then also, it contains a backpack, canteen, bedroll, small sack, fire steel, fishing line, three torches, and two days uh, trail rations. Okay. So if you're interested in that, we can go ahead and start filling that stuff in for you. Um, yeah, I think I'll just do that. Okay. So over here, um, we'll just go ahead and start with, um, you're going to go ahead and write backpack. All right. Then canteen. Bed roll, small sack, fire steel, all one word. Okay. Fishing, uh, fishing line, torches times three, and rashes, rations times two. So Two days rations. Okay. Then um, you said leather armor? Yep. And I'll give you the specifications for that in a minute. Um, then as far as the weapon, did you want to go with a bow? Did you want to go with a short sword or I mean, in a, or a hammer? Because you're also going to get a dagger, but What's the other one that you'd like? Um, let me, so like with a, with a bow, um, it deals 1d6 points of damage and it costs you five APR to use. Okay. Um, with a short sword, um, it is, let me get to that here. Um, it's again, D6 also costs you five APR, and then the hammer um, is the same. 
The difference is the hammer deals bashing damage, the uh, sword deals slicing damage, and of course the bow is ranged. Uh, I think I'll just go with a bow. Okay, all right. Um, so you're gonna go ahead and just write bow. Um, for the APR cost, you're gonna put five, because at this point it's not enchanted or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, the weight is three. So three pounds. Um, type is obviously it's stabbing. Okay. The range on that is 90 feet. And the damage is 1d6. Okay. All right. Um, then also you have a dagger. The APR cost on that is three. The damage is 1d2. And um, the weight on that is one pound. With that, the type, it, it can do slicing as well as stabbing damage. Okay. All right. And of course, when, when you're in combat, um, you would, if you, if you make a hit, you'd roll like the D2 and then add your strength to that to see what's the total amount of damage you deliver. All right. <clears throat> Um, and then your armor, it's leather. The APR cost is one. The um, weight is five pounds. I'm sorry, the weight is two pounds. No, nope, I'm sorry, five pounds. The vestment is two. And the durability is 200. Okay. All right, uh, durability. Um, how that works is that basically your armor is taking whatever damage you take. And so when it reaches 200 points, um, it'll start to break unless you mend it and start fixing it up and things like that. Okay. Um, enchanted armor is a little bit different, but to begin with, it's just, that's just how it is. All right. Okay. All right. Now, one other thing you're going to do, your armor, since it has an APR cost of one, over on the front of the sheet, where you have your MAPR, your APR, and your vestment. Okay. I'm so, in the vestment, where it says AR, you're going to write two, because that's how much bonus you're getting from your armor. All righty. In your APR, and your MAPR, where you see where it says that negative AR slash shield, yes. you're going to put one, because that's, that's what's it's costing you just to wear that around. Okay. Okay. All right. So we have all your equipment done. Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and look at your rolls. All right. All right. Um, do you have dice with you or? Oh, I have dice. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, what I want you to do is go ahead and roll a D8, and tell me what you get. All right. I rolled an eight. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's gonna be your base attack. So under the three types of attack, MAB, um, MADW, and RIB, where it says base, you just put eight. Nice. Okay. Um, you're gonna go ahead and roll a D12. All right. Uh, this one was a 10. Okay, perfect. All right, because um, that's going to go into your vestment. So above that, you see vestment, the VE, your base uh -huh. is 10. Okay. All right. Last is two D10s. Let me fish these out here. Yeah. Got a 13 total. Okay. All right. So that's going to go on your vitality base. 
And so those are the three rolls that you're going to do at every 100 EP. Um, so it has a chance your base going up by whatever those rolls are. Okay. They won't be the exact um, dice, but they'll be a different roll. Um, the last thing, your character is a fizzin. Is that correct? Um, as far as what you can do is you can add up the points over here and see which of those is the highest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. it'd be fizzing. Um, so over on this side right here where it has AF, that's your aggression factor. Okay. And the trait would be speed. <clears throat> so I believe you have five in that. Yes, five. Okay. Aggression factor comes into play um, because, like I said earlier, when we're determining attack, um, the, the order of attack, you're going to roll impulse. Okay. If you match with somebody else, you roll, you see what, which aggression factor is higher. Okay. All right. So at this point, your character is pretty much complete. What you're going to do is you're going to look at your trait and everywhere you see it along your aptitudes or in the calculations, you're going to fill that in and okay. then you'll be able to finalize the calculations. All right. All right. Um, looking at your character sort of at a glance. Um, oh, also your your carrying capacity, your strength is two. Um, so it's 15 times your strength at this point. So you'll okay. be able to carry 30 pounds. Okay. All right, Scott, so do you have any questions or anything? Uh, no. Okay. Um, Lane. One thing I would tell you, which really doesn't come into play with your character at the point, this point, is down at the bottom, there's LSA, and that's the learn spell allotment. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know how much you might have in there, um, but let's say if it's six, that means you can learn six spells at this time. That doesn't mean you have to be able to cast them, but you can learn them. Okay. And so if you do decide to learn spells on the back of your sheet, you would just put learn spells right there. Okay. The idea of learning spells is that they're, they cost less magic access per round if you've learned it. Okay. All right. Uh, so we pretty much completed your character. Um, how was the process? Was it painful, painless? Eh. No, I mean, it was pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, good, good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll let you fill out everything. Um, and um, I'm actually going to uh, have you guys either give me or give Uriah all of the data from your characters, because we're collecting the data for how your character is at zero EP, 100 EP, and so on and so forth. Um, okay. That way we can make sure that our numbers are right and our calculations and everything work out. Um, we've been doing that for uh, my character in Wahuru, um, all of the characters of Wahuru. And it's pretty interesting to see the progression from zero EP to my character has like 543 EP. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, so I think you'll be pleased with that um, progression of your character. Awesome. Uh, I think that's pretty much all we have. Um, Scott, thanks for, you know, taking the time. I'm glad that you're interested. Oh, yeah. I can't wait till we get started on that. Um, mm -hmm. So, Cam Film, um, we are pretty much done. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, getting to know Scott a little bit and, and finding out about his character, Pim. Um, you guys will be able to watch him on the, uh, the stream once it gets started. We don't have, even have a name for it yet, uh, but it's coming. Um, so no matter who you are, guys, remember, this game is for you. All right, I am ending the...